Hi, my name is Christy. Welcome back to my channel. First, yes, brown, different, trying something new. Uh, let me know in the comments if I can actually pull this look off. So I have another alterations video for you. These are super popular. So really not as bad as you think. And, and now that I say that, this one is actually a little more difficult than I originally anticipated. There was a, it, I don't know what this called. It, I'm just gonna keep doing this till I can remember. And I can't remember. A fold over sleeve, um, flop, sleeve. I'm making this dress sound hideous, but it was actually very pretty. You'll see it presented a couple extra challenges that I was not originally anticipating. And there's a lot of hand sewing in this. So if you don't have a sewing machine, you can do alterations by hand. Keep watching to see how to do that. Not only that, but we also got paid a visit by Hurricane Ian. So right in the middle of all this, Hurricane Ian decided to swoop on by. I was very lucky. No damages. Thank goodness. I know there's tons of people who we're not as lucky as I was. My heart goes out to them. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, hit that bell for notifications. And if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm so excited. Thanks so much for being here. Here is the beautiful Allie modeling her bridesmaid dress that is way too big in the top to be comfortable. So I asked her to magically spin and turn it inside out. I'll take you a little through how I like to do alterations. I'm gonna try clipping first. <laughs> I opted for clips since the dress is two layers just to see how much needed to be taken in on the two back seams. And then I moved to the two side seams so that the dress wasn't all pulled towards the back. A little movement guess and check to make sure she can still do some popular wedding dances like the chicken dance and raise the roof. And then an unnecessary part to doing alterations is to make sure that I can do the chicken dance as well. Actually, my least favorite part to doing alterations is Allie looking stunning and me making the most ridiculous faces. Seriously. Disney princess. Troll. Okay, in my slight defense, I did have a pin in my mouth, which caused some, just some of the weird faces. Yeah, okay. I understood all of that. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever's more comfortable for you, I think is going to be the better option. This is more comfortable. That's more comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Some final chalk marks in case the clips slip, and there we have it. I have removed the clips and placed pins through the chalk line so that they appear on both sides. This will show me how much to take in from both layers. I'm going to start with the side seam. First, I'll need to seam rip the whole side seam. And this dress hanger thingy that is always more in the way than it's worth will also be removed. And there is boning inside each seam, which will need to come out and be re-added later. The idea is to line up the pins and pinch the layers together to create a new seam, which will taper from the original waistline seam up to the armpit. And the most tedious and time-consuming part is carefully seam ripping the dress open and removing the dress hanger thingy. What are they called? Then continue your way down until the boning is exposed and can be removed. With the boning gone, I can now line up the pins with right sides together and repin all four layers together. Now, typically I would pin and sew the two layers separately. However, this dress was joined at the waistline and I did not have access to the layers individually without completely taking off the skirt. Once happy with the pin placement, I reposition each pin so that they are easier to pull out while sewing. Little tips I've learned along the way. Backstitch at the beginning and end while you sew, tapering into the original seam. A quick check of how it turned out and it's so great when things just magically work out and it looks beautiful from the outside. Next step is to reinsert the boning into the seam by basically just nestling it in there, folding over one side of the seam and folding it over again to encompass it. And then that extra little part of fabric will just need to be cut away first. And to make sure that the boning doesn't poke through the fabric, this dressmaker has already included a little fabric hat to place at each end to prevent this. And it's just more comfortable to wear when there isn't boning poking you in the side. Continue pinning the boning inside the seam folds, and this will be the first of many times that I decided to hand sew the seam down so that a line of stitching did not appear on the outside. Hand sewing is great, and it really gives a nice hidden look since you have more control. However, it is just as tedious and time consuming as seam ripping. 
I'm doing a ladder stitch, which basically just means you pick up a small portion of the fabric on one side and then place the needle directly across where the needle comes out on the other side of the fabric and take another small piece of that fabric from the opposite side. This joins it together by creating a ladder type stitch. Then I continued all the way down until I reached the waistline, double checking to make sure that none of these stitches are showing from the outside layer. And then we move on to the next seam. My seam ripper gets some additional fun since I first need to seam rip the sticky clothing tape just past the seam before opening the back seam. With the sticky tape unpicked and pinned out of the way, here is where I didn't fully think this project through. So, if I'm going to take in the back seam, the top of the dress where the flop over sleeve is will also need to be removed and shortened. Therefore, I also have to seam rip the floppy sleeve just past the seam. After doing so, the next steps are the same as the first seam. Line up the four layers with right sides together, then reposition the pins to make it easier to sew. Oh, I'm also adding one additional step of chalking the pin line as a guideline for sewing. Please enjoy this blurry footage of me sewing. You know what sewing looks like. It's okay. Same as before to insert the boning, put on its little hat and nestle it within the seam, fold over and fold over again and pin in place. More hand sewing. After the boning is hand sewn, we can now reattach the sticky clothing tape, keeping in mind that it is now longer and the excess will need to be snipped off before folded under and sewn back in place. Now, since the top is still open, I am able to do this on the machine because I can still separate the layers. Or so I thought. The rubber kept sticking to my presser foot and I ended up hand sewing this as well. The floppy sleeve thing also needs to be shortened, so I have lined it up and marked where the new end of the floppy sleeve will be. I've marked both sides with pins so that when I turn it inside out, I will be able to reline up those pins. Did a few quick measurements, chalk marked a line, and sewed with right sides together. Check your work and then cut off the excess. Clip the corner and turn it right side out to poke out the new seam corner. If all went well, it should line up and can now be reattached. And since the layers are still separate, I am finally able to use my sewing machine again to sew the outside layer without the stitches showing through both layers. My fleeting moment with my sewing machine is over and I am back to hand sewing. This time I am reattaching the inside layer, making sure that none of the stitches are showing from the outside. I hope you've enjoyed this alterations video featuring tons of hand sewing, which yes, is slower, but it's nice to know that you don't need a sewing machine to do alterations at home. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Enjoy Allie modeling her new dress in a beautiful backdrop called The Aftermath of Hurricane Ian.